everyone welcome back in this particular video we will be discussing the problem print matrix in spiral order we are given an integer a generate a square matrix filled with elements from 1 till a square a into a in spiral order so we have to create a matrix a 2d array which will contain the values from 1 till a into a and it should be a square matrix that is number of rows number of columns should be same but the values should be in a spiral order now the spiral order according to the problem statement is a order which will be clockwise in nature starting from 0 comma 0 that is it is starting from the top left corner 0 comma 0 corner and going in the clockwise spiral order so if we take a sample example to get a better understanding for a is equals to 3 the square matrix will be 3 cross 3 and the values will be 1 2 3 8 9 4 7 6 5 these are the values from 1 till a square from 1 till 9 3 into 3 9 in spiral order how is it spiral order we can say if we are starting from 1 then going to 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 7 8 9 so you can see that it is forming a spiral and in a, it is a clockwise spiral traversal which is starting as you can see from 0 comma 0 cell that is 1 is at the top left corner so given any n value given any size of the square matrix we have to generate the corresponding values so if i take an example of 4 cross 4 matrix if a value is 4 we can say first it will be having 1 2 3 4 then spiral will go downwards that is it will have 5 6 7 then spiral will go in the left direction that is 8 9 10 then it will go in the upward direction this is how the spiral will be formed so now we will be having 11 12 and same thing will repeat that is 13 14 15 and finally 16 so we can say this is a square matrix which we require for n equal to 4 this is a 4 cross 4 matrix but the point is how we can generate this see if we need a spiral can we say first we need to fill all the values in the topmost row that is 1 2 3 4 then we need to fill all the values in the last column that is 4 5 6 7 then we need to fill all the values in the bottom row that is 7 8 9 10 but in reverse order and finally we need to store all the values from bottom to top in the first column that is 10 11 12 but from bottom to top that is in the reverse order and same thing if we repeat for the inner shells also that is this boundary the top boundary we can say the right boundary the bottom boundary and again the left boundary same thing can be repeated and we will be able to print all the values in spiral order we will be able to store all the values in spiral order but the point is how we can run a loop in such kind of boundaries how we can first travel the top boundary so this is let's say the top boundary this is let's say the right boundary that is the rightmost column then this is nothing but the bottom boundary the bottom wall you can say anything and this is nothing but the left boundary from top bottom to top so these four walls we need and in order to print these four walls we will require four loops why one loop will be required for this second loop for this third loop for this and fourth loop for this so four loops one for top one for right one for bottom and one finally for the left but uh, given these four loops we need to have some row and column variable pointers why for the top row, can we say that the row index will be 0th row, R0, R1, R2, R3. Similarly, there will be column 0, column 1, column 2, column 3. So for the top elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, we can say we have to print all the values from R0 with the different columns. That is R0, C0, R0, C1, R0, C2, R0, C3. That is 1, 2, 3, 4. We have to store all these values in sequential order. So in top wall, we can say the row is fixed and the row is nothing but the first row of the entire matrix which is initially zero for the right wall we are running a loop on the row why because the row is changing from r0 1 2 3 row is changing but what about the column the column is fixed which is nothing but the last column c3 the rightmost cell so we can say the last column is fixed 
and it is having a value what it is having a value of n minus 1 why because it is c3 there are four if rows and columns then last column will be 4 minus 1 the third column similarly for the bottom wall or the bottom boundary all these values are nothing but having the cells with values 7 8 9 10 in the last row that is r3 so last row will be fixed for the bottom wall and which is nothing but n minus 1 again and the column will be changing but this time in reverse order that is column will be going from 3 to 0 finally for the left wall we will say the column is fixed as the first column so first column is fixed as the zeroth column so we need these four variables first row initially to zero last column initially to n minus one last row initially to n minus one again and first column initially to zero in order to print four different walls but there will be some corner cases or there will be some issues when we are iterating over the four walls of a given spiral the problem will be if let's say the top wall is getting printed absolutely fine. Let's say we are able to print 10, 1, 2, 3, 4. Not just print, but we can say we are able to store the values 1, 2, 3, 4 in the topmost row. But when going towards the right boundary, again 4 will be traveled. So we will say that if this cell is already filled, this cell is already filled, this cell is already filled, this cell is already filled then we should start from the next cell in the right wall. We should not start from the same cell because if we will start from the same cell, it will override the value and make it 5. But we don't want to make this value 5. We want the next cell to be 5. So we do not want the corner element to be repeated. That is, for the right wall, we can say the values should start from this particular cell and going to the last row. Similarly, for the bottom wall, since 7 is already covered, since 7 is already a part of the right boundary, we should not start from the same cell. We should start from next cell. That is, if we are taking all these values in bottom wall, 8, 9, 10 should get stored as a part of bottom wall. And finally, for the left wall, 11 and 12 should be stored. So no value should be repeated. No boundary corner case, the boundary corner element should be repeated in the top wall. This element should not be repeated and how we can ignore this element. We can say just discard the top row after printing all the values of the top row after storing all the values of the top row. Just ignore it and how we can ignore the top row by making the top row or the first row plus plus. That is the first row will increment by one after it is stored. The last column after it is stored, after we are able to store all the values, we have to discard the last column. So last column will now become C2. C2 means the previous column that is last column should become minus minus. That is decrement by one. Similarly, after printing all the values in the bottom row, in all the values in bound, bottom boundary, we should discard the bottom boundary so that next time it should start from the previous row that is R2. That is row of the last should become minus minus. The last row will decrement by one. Finally, for the left wall, if we are able to store all the values 11 and 12, now next cell should not get stored in the same column. That is now next cell should be stored in the R1, C1, not R0, C0. That is now we can say this column should be discarded. And if this column should be discarded, we can say first column should become plus plus. That is incremented by one. So if we talk about entirety, what is happening after one shell, we are able to discard the top row by making first row plus plus. We are able to discard the right wall or the right boundary by making last column minus minus. We are able to discard the bottom wall also by making last row minus minus. And we are able to discard the left wall by making first column plus plus. And this same procedure will repeat now for the inner shell. But now this time for inner shell, we should basically start from one comma one cell then if there were further inner shells the same thing will repeat so this entire four set of loops for the four boundaries will be wrapped inside a, another while loop or a for loop which will run for the entire matrix so we have to do the step in a nested loop kind of manner and till when should the outer loop run we can say the outer loop will run till we are able to fill all the values in the entire matrix in a spiral order. And when can we say we are able to fill all the values? When we are able to 
basically go till a into a a square because values if a is 4 are from 1 to 16 so the point when we are able to reach to 16 we will say we have to stop so while this loop will run till the point the value which we are filling is not going more than 16 if it is less than a into a so this will be the pseudo code kind of thing let's just write the same thing into the platform so what we need first of all we require a resultant matrix so that we can return it so create a resultant matrix of integers of n rows and columns of n rows and n columns initially all the values will be zero but in order to fill all the values in this spiral matrix, we need four pointers. What are those four pointers? We require top row, top column, last row, last column, or first row, first column, last row, last column. So we will say initialize, initialize top row as zero. Similarly, top column initially was zero, the first row, first column. The last row, or let's not say top row, but let's say these are first row and first column. Similarly, last row, and last column as n minus one last row as n minus one last column as n minus one because it is a square matrix and once we have initialized all these three or four pointers actually we will say run a while loop run a while loop till the point the value which we want to fill is less than or equal to n into n as soon as it becomes more than n square or a square whatever we will stop but value how should we initialize this value variable we will start filling the value from 0 comma 0 cell with value 1 we have to start uh, filling 1 2 3 4 5 up till up till n square so initialize val variable as 0 or maybe let's initialize at 1 only so that we can just start filling it from 1 so we will run a while loop inside this while loop what should we do we should say that we will be running four loops first loop for the top wall so run a while loop or maybe a for loop this time we can run a for loop for the top row for this one two three four values the column will be changing so loop will be on columns from the zeroth column till the third column that is from the first column till the last column so run a for loop for columns in range first column till last column first column until last column and what we need to do we need to just store the value the current value variable in the current matrix so we will say set matrix the current row actually the first row because the current row is the first row comma the current column as well and after setting the well we will also do the value plus plus increment value by one increment value by one why because next cell will be filled by two next cell by three next cell by four and so on so increment value by one this thing which we have done for the top row we have to do it for the left right bottom all the all the four walls all all the four boundaries first boundary is nothing but the top wall let me just write it this is nothing but the top wall next we need the right wall the right boundary so for right boundary how should the loop run for the right boundary that is having values five six seven we need to do what we need to start the loop from r1 go till r3 that is from first row till the last row because first row we should do plus plus so we have to before running the right wall loop to discard the corner element to discard duplicate corner elements to not make the same corner element be a part of the right wall also we have to do first row plus plus so first row should become plus plus then we can say we have to set all the values for right wall that is row loop will run and we have to run it in the range from first row till last row and every time set the last column value the current row comma last column because right wall is there nothing but the last column with the current corresponding value and increment it by one same thing now for right wall after storing all the values in the right wall we have to discard the rightmost cell that is the last corner the last we can say the element having value seven so in order to discard this what we have to do we have to basically make the last column minus minus as it is written as you can see last column should become minus minus <laughs> after the right wall same thing for the bottom wall but bottom wall should be the inverse or the reverse of top wall top wall was running in the range first column till last column but bottom wall will run 
the loop for the columns in range last column till first column that is in reverse order from right to left it will run and what we have to do every time set the corresponding value in the last row not the first row because bottom wall is the last corresponding r3 and similarly if we have to discard this corner element we have to discard the last row by making last row minus minus so last row after printing the bottom wall should become minus minus and same thing for the last wall the three walls are done only the left wall is remaining left wall should also be done in the same manner that is we have to run a loop for the rows this time because for the left wall the rows will be changing from the last row till the first row from the bottom till the top so rows will start from the last row it will go till the first row and what we have to do every time set the corresponding value in the corresponding row comma the first column because left wall is having c0 currently it is having all the values in c0 and as soon as the first column is done we have to discard it by making first column plus plus as written so after running this entire loop we have to do first column plus plus this entire inner four loops will run till the point we are able to store n square values till the point we are able to store 16 values if n is 4 and finally when the entire set the spiral traversal is done we will return the matrix which is formed which we are able to store so return the resultant matrix so this is the entire pseudo code for the problem spiral matrix a uh, little bit difficult problem to be honest but once you will do a dry run using the pseudo code provided to you or using the code which we will be writing in the next particular video the entire code will be or the entire approach actually will be easily clear to you but the point is what is the time complexity and what is the space complexity of this approach since we are running a loop on the entire matrix in some order but we are able to go to each and every cell only once the total time complexity will be equal to total number of cells in the matrix so total time complexity will be equal to order of n into n which is n square that is number of cells what about space complexity if we talk about output space that is a matrix which we are creating since we are creating a matrix of n square n square n square n size that is uh, for now 16 cells the output will also be order of n square n but what about extra space since we are not taking any extra space since we have just maintained four variables four integer variables first row last column first uh, last row first column and so on what we need we need extra space of constant no extra space constant extra space is required so this is the time and the space complexity for the problem print matrix in spiral order in java programming language we have to first of all create a resultant matrix of integers with n rows n columns that is n square bracket two times because it is a matrix that is a 2d array resultant is equals to new int the number of rows are also n the number of columns are also n because it is a square matrix as it was given in the question now to store all the values we have to create a variable which is val which should start from one we will be starting a variable one and we will be incrementing this variable as and when we are storing values we have to initialize four pointers that is a four corner row and column values first row initially to zero then first column initially also as zero that is a top row top column last row initially as n minus one and last column initially also as n minus one these four variables once initialized now we can run a loop in order to basically print or store all the values in spiral order so what we need we need first of all inner loops for top wall right wall bottom wall left wall so for top wall what we need we need to run a loop for all the columns so for int column will start from the first column it will go till the last column less than equal to last column and column will become plus plus because it is going from first to last so column will become plus plus every time whatever we we are having the value the current first row comma the column value we will store it in the cell so the resultant of the first row comma the current column we will have the value set it as the current val variable and we have to increment the val variable by one so we can increment it by doing val plus plus simply so if i just return the matrix for now 
we have not implemented the outer loop we have not implemented the other walls for now what should ha happen is one two three should get printed in the first row then next two rows should have zero 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 all all the values so let's see if it is having one two three then all three zeros in the remaining two rows yes one two three is getting per printed perfectly so now let's now implement the right wall so for the right wall what we need should do we should basically run a for loop again but this time for row starting from the first row going till the last row because it will go from top to bottom first row till the last row and row will become plus plus because it is going from top to bottom hence it is increasing and same thing instead of now first row we have to set the value at the first the last column actually that is row comma last column will be set by val and we will do val plus plus let's run this code again to see if it is working fine for the last wall it should not work fine actually why because first row we have not done plus plus but let's see what is the output right now as you can see one two four five six why because this cell is repeated in both the first row as well as the last column it is a corner value so discarding the corner value to be taken twice what we have to do we have to discard the first row altogether first row plus plus if we will do it let's see whether it is taking four in the corner or only three in the corner three is the correct output four is the wrong output let's see so it is taking three now one two three then four five that is the top row the first row is now discarded after it is done we are discarding it same thing we have to do for the last column also last column should become minus minus otherwise it will be repeated for bottom one let's run a loop for all the columns but this time for the bottom wall, we have to run it in reverse order. That is from last column till first column. From last column until greater than equal to first column, we will run the loop and we will always do minus minus. Why? Because we are now going from right to left. The last till the first. And for the bottom wall, the resultant of the current row, that is the last row actually, because bottom wall is having last row comma the column value we will set it with the current val and same thing we will do val plus plus so if i will run it now again let's see if it is also printing five six seven in reverse order in the bottom wall or not so it is giving me five six seven in the bottom let's now do it for the left wall the last wall and before that to make the corner element not get repeated we have to do last row minus minus so that after printing bottom wall last row is discarded Finally, for the left wall, we have to run a loop for the rows, but this time from last row till the first row, from bottom to top in reverse order. That is last row till greater than equal to first row, row minus minus, because it is going in reverse order. And every time set the value at the current row, comma the first column, because the left wall is nothing but first column as having the current value well, and we will also do val plus plus. So if I will run it again, let's see if it is giving me seven, eight in the left wall or not. It should give me seven, eight in the left wall. Yes. But only the outer shell, as you can see, is printed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine is not printed. What will happen for four cross four matrix? It should be able to print all the walls which are bound in the boundary. That is the values we are able to say C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All the inner values are not printed. Why it is happening? Because this entire thing we have to repeat for all the shells. This entire thing is just for one shell, one spiral. We have to do it for several spirals. So before doing for the next spiral, we have to discard the first column because we have printed it. And now repeat this entire thing in a while loop. Till which point? Till the value which we are storing is less than or equal to n square. As soon as it becomes more than n square, we have to stop because we are then able to store all the values. That is all the cells in the matrix. So if I will run it again, hopefully this time it should give me correct output for n equal to 3 also, n equal to 4 also. Any n variable should give me correct output. Let's try it for the same sample input 3. It should give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in spiral order. Let's see. It is taking some time to run and it is getting accepted. Let's submit and see if it is working for all the test cases. And as you can already see, the all 11 test cases are getting accepted. But 
what is the time complexity of this entire approach what is the space complexity of this entire approach first of all if we talk about the time complexity since we are running a loop over all the cells one by one in some order spiral order is there but in some order the total time complexity will be n square because there are total n square cells and the space complexity since we are having an output matrix the output space will be n square but since we are not taking anything extra in order to solve this problem the extra space will be constant just four variables so extra space is constant output space is n square that is the time and space complexity analysis and the corner cases we have already discussed that is we have to discard the values which are present in the matrix corner so that they are not repeated so with that we are done with the problem print matrix in spiral order 